So in this lecture, uh, we're going to continue our discussion of mathematical modeling, right? Coming up with functions or formulas that describe real-world situations. And we're, we're going to look at some more practical situations in, in this lecture, uh, specifically related to manufacturing. So I have a scenario here where I have this window pane uh, that's a rectangle, and I know that its length is equal to three times its height. So, uh, and I also have the cost of this glass, right? It's a dollar and eight cents per square inch. So I want to find a model for the total cost of producing one of these windows. All right, so what, what, what do we know? Well, right, well, I know that the area is equal to the base times the height. And the total cost is going to be equal to the area times the unit cost. All right, so how, how can I find the area? Well, what do, what do I know? I know the length is three times the height. So if this is the height, then the length down here must be three times h. Okay, well, this length, this, this is actually, let me, let's not call it the length, let's call it B for the base, so, so that it matches the variables in the area formula. And now this, this is what I needed to know, right? The area is the base, that's 3H, times the height, that's H, times the unit cost, which is 1.08. And now I'm, I'm just going to kind of clean this up. 3 times 1.08, that's 3.4. Uh, 2, 4, and h times h is h squared. And I, I want I want to use my function notation here, right? So I'll say c of h equals that formula, and that's it, right? There's my cost function based on uh, the one parameter that the manufacturing department gets to gets to choose when they're building one of these window panes. Right, so I've got a slightly more complicated situation here. Right now we have a, a window that's made up of two different kinds of glass. Right, we we've got this dark green glass down here, which is two and a quarter per square inch, and I've got the light green glass, which is a dollar fifty. Per square inch, and I've got the same question. Well, the question is find a function, uh, find a model for the total cost of producing one of these windows. Well, I'm going to do the same thing, right? I, I need to find the area of each of these pieces. I'll multiply that area by the unit cost, uh, then add the two together, and that'll give me the total cost. All right? So um, all I know is the radius of this bottom section here. So that's the only variable I'm going to be allowed to use. All right, well, doing this, this dark circle, let, let's call it uh, A sub D. Uh, that dark section is a semicircle. Right, well, the area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared, which means the cost of this section is 2.25 times 1 half pi r squared. Okay, uh, and actually let, let's take this a little further. This is 1.125 pi r squared. All right, so how, how about the light green section? Well, that, that's a little, uh, a little more challenging because it's kind of an irregular shape that I don't have a, an ex, a specific formula for. But remember, a, a kind of a basic geometry technique, uh, I can find the area of that light green section by, let, let's call that A sub L, by taking the area of the total rectangle and subtracting the area of the dark green section, the part that I don't want. Uh, what's the area of the rectangle? Well, we we're just talking about that's base times height. Uh, the base is made up of these two pieces, and both of those are radii. They both have the same length. So the total distance down there is 2r. 
So that will be 2r times the height, which is also a radius. So multiply that by r, and that gives me the area of the rectangle. Mine is, and I already found the area of the, the dark section, that's 1 half pi r squared. All right, so if we clean this up a little bit, this is 2r squared minus 1 half pi r squared. Right, and let, let's see, can, can I take this further? Well, uh, we could factor out the r squared, and what's left is 2 minus 1 half pi times r squared. That, that kind of makes a little more sense, right? Because now, that, I know it's a little messy, but 2 minus 1 half pi, that's just a number. Right, so that is a, just a number times the radius squared. Okay, uh, so what what is the cost of doing this section? Well, the cost of this light section is going to be uh, the unit cost, that's $1.50, times 2 minus 1 half pi r squared. And uh, that's <laughs> that's not a very a very attractive number, right? But let, let's uh, let's just go ahead here and, and get our total cost, right? The cost as a function of r is the sum of these two, so it's 1.125 pi r squared plus 1.5 times 2 minus 1 half pi r squared. Now notice we've got a common r squared here again. So I can factor that r squared out and what's left is 1.125 plus 1.5 times 2 minus 1 half pi. And now it's a practical question. Nobody wants a big messy weird fraction thing with pies in it for, for the answer. Manufacturing department is not going to thank you if you send this function over to them. Get your calculator out. Or if you get your calculator out and, and just ask them and figure out what that number part is, this comes out to 4.18 r squared. So there is my cost function. Turned out to not be too bad, right? It's just really a very simple function of the radius. All right, so I've got, got one more example here. And again, it's it's very similar one. Uh, what I'm doing here, let, let's see if we can sketch this. I have two, now this is going to seriously test my artistic ability. I have two spheres, and they're identical. They both have a radius of r, and they are contained in a box. What I want to know is, what, what is the area outside of the spheres? Because that's where I'm going to have to put this packing material. And I know the unit cost of the packing material. So what, what I need to do is find the volume of that exterior space. Then, again, I'll multiply it by the unit cost, and I'll be home free. All right, well, let, let's see. I'm going to use the same approach here to find the volume. The volume of the outside area is equal to the volume of the box minus the volume of the spheres. All right, well, the volume of a box, that's length times width times height, and the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and we have two of them, so I'm going to double that. All right, so what, what are these dimensions? Well, what, what is this length down here? Well, this length is made up of four radii. So that's going to be 4r. This width here, this is the width of one of the spheres. So that's going to be just 2r. And the height is the height of one sphere, which is also 2r. So this turns into 4r times 2r times 2r minus 8 thirds pi r cubed. So I'm going with the, 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 rate, the r is fine there, right? I want this to be in terms of the radius of one of these uh, spheres that we're putting in here. All right, so what, what does this simplify to then? 4 times 2 times 2, that's 16 r cubed 
minus 8 thirds pi r cubed. And I can factor an r cubed out of here. This is r cubed 16 minus 8 thirds pi. So the cost, C of r, is equal to the volume times the unit cost. The volume is of that expression we just found, r cubed 16 minus 8 thirds pi. The unit cost is 20 cents per cubic foot. And that's it, right? More or less, again, you can get your calculator out. This bit here is just a number. And if you put that into your calculator, this becomes 2.362 r cubed. And that's it. That's my answer. That is my cost function for the padding that will surround these two objects. Okay, so now, now we, we've seen some, some more practical models, right, taken from manufacturing. Uh, and we, we've got one more lecture to go in, in this part of the series. Uh, and in, in that one, we're going to look at a kind of a transportation example, something related to uh, self-driving cars.